Hi, this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing, and uh, today I wanted to do sort of a brief video uh, review of the Dell Inspiron Mini 10, the uh, new version with the Intel Atom Pine Trail processor. There's already a detailed review with pictures, photos, and text up on my website at lilliputing.com, but today I just wanted to do a little video overview. So um, one of the first things that you'll notice when you take this guy out of the box is that it's got a one-piece power adapter, which is nice. It's a, it's a lot more compact than the two-piece solutions with the brick and the separate cable that you wind up getting from a lot of different um, companies. So, you know, it definitely helps make this laptop a little bit more portable, especially considering it's not exactly the smallest 10-inch model that you're going to find. It has a um, little bit of extra space near the rear, for example. And that's because the uh, it extends out beyond the lid and that's where the battery hangs out. Uh, now, a lot of netbooks, when they have six cell batteries, the battery actually sort of comes down a little bit farther below the base of the, uh, the netbook. In this case, whether you're the three cell or the six cell, the case remains exactly the same. So again, a little bit wider than some netbooks uh, because it extends past the lid, but it gives it sort of a uh, overall less bulky look um, on the bottom. Now, some people have complained that they think that this makes it look uh, junky or, or, you know, just um, fat in the back, but, you know, I, I find that it sort of grows on you. While we're taking a look around the sides, we've got uh, headphone, microphone, USB, Ethernet. Um, on the back, you've got a lock port and power plug. VGA, two USB ports, and a SD card slash uh, Sony memory stick card. On the bottom, You've got the uh, space for the battery, which uh, sort of just pops right off. And underneath, there's actually, in this particular model, a SIM card slot, because it is 3G enabled. Now, opening up the laptop to take a look on the inside, first let's uh, take a look at the keyboard. The uh, sort of common keyboard that we're finding these days on netbooks tends to be more chiclet style with more space between the keys. This isn't quite chiclet style, but whereas the earlier version had very flat keys that almost touched each other, these have sort of uh, two-tiered keys. On the bottom, the keys almost touch each other, but at the top, there's a little bit more space in between them. I find it uh, actually extraordinarily comfortable to type on, and um, I had no problems uh, typing in about 100 words a minute, which is about as fast as I can go. At the top, you'll notice that um, whereas most netbooks and laptops in general have uh, sort of the secondary functions for the function keys in blue, meaning wireless, battery, brightness, volume, etc. Normally those are in blue, meaning you have to hit the function key in order to adjust the volume or adjust the brightness. Um, it's actually flipped here, where you have to hit function in order to do, say, F5 or F11. So it makes it actually very easy to adjust the brightness with just a single key. Now the touchpad, as much as I love the keyboard, I kind of don't love the touchpad. Um, first of all, Dell on earlier models had multi-touch support, meaning you could use two fingers to scroll up and down or uh, you know, pinch to zoom. That's, that's gone here, so in order to scroll you need to sort of move towards the right side to scroll up and down or the bottom side to scroll left and right. That's not really that big a deal. The bigger problem is that there's no distinct buttons on the left or right side or on the bottom. Instead, they've been integrated into the touchpad itself. And on the one hand, that makes it um, easier to have a large, wide touchpad. On the other hand, it can make it pretty difficult to, to uh, hit the key that you're looking for. So, for example, if you are just using one finger and scrolling around, it's not really that hard to tap or click because you're lifting your finger off and you're clicking. But if you want to do something that requires using two hands, it gets a lot more complicated. Let's see if I can do this without the camera falling. So, for example, if you wanted to open a window and then drag that window around, you would need to hold and drag. And it's definitely possible to do this, but I find that you run the risk of if you don't hold your finger down securely, the cursor might jump from one place to another. Or if you're the sort of person who, you know, uh, just sort of hovers one finger over, getting ready to click on a button, there's a chance that you might click the button before you mean to and make the cursor jump. And so that means that um, sometimes you, you might find yourself um, trying to type something and suddenly you're writing on the wrong line or, or problems like that. It can be used, you can get used to it, but I find that this laptop is generally much easier to use if, um, if I have an uh, external mouse instead of using the touchpad. Now let's take a, look, a quick look at the performance of the laptop itself. 
Um, with the Pine Trail processor, it's not significantly faster than the original uh, versions of the Mini 10 with the Intel Atom N270 processor for the um, uh, Mini 10V, for example, but it uh, gets much better battery life. So whereas with the Dell Inspire and Mini 10V, I was getting six to seven hours of battery life, with this model, I'm getting closer to nine hours of battery life, which is a pretty nice boost. The battery is about the same size, but I'm getting two to three hours more battery life than I was previously, which is great. Um, pretty good for basic web browsing. And load up my web page here. Launches pretty quickly. You can do some basic multitasking, opening up, uh, you know, extra browser tabs, for example, and flipping back and forth between them. The uh, the laptop can handle sort of 720p video fairly well. Um, 1080p is pretty much out of the question. And flash video, you're pretty much stuck with standard definition. Now, there is a higher-end version of this laptop that can handle uh, 1080p video locally. Um, and the optional component for that is the Broadcom Crystal HD Video Accelerator card. And I think it's about a $35 bonus. It's not quite available yet, but it should be sometime in the next couple of weeks. And eventually Adobe and Broadcom are going to be working together to add uh, high-definition flash video support, too. So you'll be able to watch videos from uh, sites like YouTube or Vimeo or Hulu that are in high-definition without uh, stuttering, because that uh, sort of media coprocessor takes the uh, uh, stress off of the CPU, so the CPU is not required to do all of that video. Now, one of the things that uh, Dell loads up on here is called the Dell Dock, which I sort of have a, uh, well, mostly hate relationship with. Um, it's supposed to make it easy to launch certain applications, for example, under email and chat. You've got Skype, you've got a chat uh, application here under internet. You've got your Dell Broadband Utility, Internet Explorer. Um, there's also an uh, icon for Internet Explorer, and you can drag and drop programs up here that you want to launch quickly and easily. And so the idea is instead of going to the Start menu and finding the program you're looking for, you can just go to the top of the screen and grab your program. Uh, the problem is that it appears when you go to the top of the screen even if you're in a program. So say I want to click on this tab. Now I can't click on the tab because the dock just showed up. So, you know, I can sort of see why Dell was uh, offered this. It sort of, it, some people might find it makes it easier to launch programs. I find it kind of a nuisance and I tend to disable it. I'd probably uninstall it if, uh, if this wasn't a review unit and I just wanted to sort of see how it works. The, uh, the thing that I did uninstall pretty quickly was McAfee Antivirus, which I found really bogged down system performance more than was acceptable. Um, you can replace it with something free like Microsoft Security Essentials or uh, pay software like uh, Kaspersky's uh, uh, netbook specific version of their antivirus software. So, I mean, there are, all, are alternative solutions. Uh, Dell shipped this one to me with McAfee Security Suite on it. And there you go. That's a uh, short video overview of the Dell Inspiron Mini 10 with the Intel Atom Pine Trail processor. For more details, visit lilliputing.com where you can find a complete review of this laptop. I'm Brad Linder with Lilliputing.